Hey guys, in this video, I wanna teach you a framework that we've been developing to correctly populate a financial model, to budget how much funding a startup needs to raise and to make sure that you don't run out of money. I'm gonna be working on the latest version of our Slidebean financial modeling tool. It's included on every Slidebean account under the financial section. A big warning before we begin, one of the biggest mistakes I see founders make is treating their financial models as this one-time homework, just something that they show investors and then completely forget about. That's not how it works. In the ideal world, the CEO and other people in your operations team will be using this, I wanna say at least once a week, to have visibility on the company's future, to stay up to date on what's happening, whether it's change of expenses or plans shift or new hires coming on board, like these changes need to be reflected, need to be budgeted for. So this needs to be a live working document where at least once a week, you look at budgets, you budget new hires, you evaluate your marketing campaigns, and you check that your revenue is on track against what you predicted. Now funding for tech startups works in milestones. When you raise money as a pre-seed company, you're budgeting enough money to get to the next fundable milestone to the seed stage, plus a few extra months to close that round and move forward. Now we have a whole video about funding rounds if you wanna check that out. But the idea is that you should always know, A, when you're reaching the next fundable milestone, and B, ensuring that there's enough money to get there. But remember, closing a round takes time, about six months. Now the dashboard in the model has a few useful tools for this. This cash in the bank chart turns red if your cash balance is dipping below zero in the span of the prediction, as well as these metrics that show you how much runway, how many months you have left. Okay, so now let's start with the FS month sheet. This is like a summary sheet, financial statements, that let you see like a monthly overview of the company in the numbers, not in charts. Now notice that there's a milestones line here, which lets you add labels. You know that this is an input line because every input in this model is gonna be highlighted as blue. Now I'm shooting this video in June, 2025. If you haven't started fundraising yet, then you should map the closing of your next round of funding at least six months out, let's say in January, 2026. Because raising a round of funding does take about six months. That means that any expense that we add this year in 2025, we're gonna have to make sure that the founders can cover out of pocket or with the money the company already has. Because pre-seed funding is not gonna hit our bank accounts for months. The money that I raise now needs to be enough to get to seed stage, to the metrics for seed, and to raise the next round of funding. Now seed rounds in this day and age are normally raised when a company has 20 to $30 million in monthly revenue. For a SaaS, that'd be 20 to 30K in monthly recurring revenue. Contrary to what people believe, you don't just raise the seed round because you've launched a product. You need actual metrics. Now for now, I'm gonna assume that we're gonna reach seed metrics around November, 2026. Again, that means that we need to find a way to safely get to that mark 30K in revenue by then, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. Now that probably means that we have to launch this product maybe July at the latest, assuming some buffer time to figure out our growth. Now, if we hit 30K revenue in November, then we've reached seed metrics, we can start pitching our seed round, and it's gonna take, again, about six months to close, let's say in May, 2027. We'll have some revenue to offset expenses this time, but we probably won't be profitable yet. So now that we have this basic timeline, framework, we can begin adding expenses and see how everything fits together. Most of that stuff is gonna be handled from the assumption sheet, which you wanna think of as the main dashboard on your financial model. Normally, this is where we're gonna be putting most of the work. Now we have some tools for revenue forecast here, which I'm gonna to get to in a sec, but down here, you can find the assumptions for the founders. We might be working for this company already, but we'll only pay ourselves a salary after we close some pre-seed funding. So that's gonna be in January, 2026. Let's also add some budget, say 500 bucks a month for some SaaS tools that we might need. And maybe a thousand dollar budget for accounting and legal expenses. I'm also going to add a couple of team members. I'm gonna do one senior developer and one marketing person, which is only gonna be hired after we've launched the product. Now in the model's knowledge base, we have a full video about adding other staff members, about dealing with salary raises, stock options, and other expenses. But for this video, I'm just gonna keep it very simple. Now, the model has also some basic revenue forecasting tools. So, so let's use a SaaS model to budget when we're gonna launch this product. Let's set a marketing budget of 7,500 at launch, and then scale that at 10% every month. We're just gonna assume that we can get signups for about $20 each, and that 5% of those signups are gonna become paying customers to this plan, which is gonna be, say, 99 bucks a month. Now, the first thing that we want to check after the basic set of assumptions 
is that the business overall makes sense. So we can go to the FS annual sheet and find the seven year forecast for this business, which looks like the company's getting to some $44 million in annual revenue by year seven. It's exciting, it's profitable. Now, obviously we haven't added all the expenses yet. The team's gonna need to grow and so on. But for now, at least at this, the core, this business makes sense. It grows to where we need it to go and it's profitable. If you do this and you never see profitability here, there's probably something wrong. So we might need to rethink maybe our growth channels or maybe our pricing. Now the model includes these basic forecasting tools, a simple software as a service model for conversion and an e-commerce model. But if you need a custom model, our team can actually help build that. I'm gonna drop a link below where you can find more details on that. Okay, so this business at its core makes sense, but how about the funding part? We're gonna have to play around with the model a little bit. Now the dashboard is a real handy tool to navigate through all of this because if this chart is red, it basically means that something is off about the model. This chart should never be red. It means that you've run out of money at some point. So in the monthly sheet, it's easy to see where that's happening here. Uh, why? Because we have a small expense and these are just basic maybe SaaS tools or different expenses that you might have. In this case, I just added slight bean as an expense uh, for these months. But what's important is that you know, we can, we need to understand that we can't run out of money. The model should never be in red. You know, an easy way to solve that is to say, well, the founders are gonna contribute maybe a thousand dollars to the company uh, and they're gonna fund the company through this time. And by doing that, the dashboard turns green and we know that we have, we have everything working as it should. Uh, again, we can use this here to say, hey, how many months of runway do we have? And notice that this dashboard also has a drop down here that lets us see different months, right? So for example, if we choose our launch month, which is April, uh, we can start to see how that's changing and going down. We can move a little bit further to when we start pitching our seed round, right? So by the time we reach seed metrics, that was November, we can start to see how much revenue we have, how much that's growing month over month, how many months we have left at runway if we didn't have the revenue, uh, how many runs we have left at runway when we have a forecast, and just the cash in the bank, which again reaches almost zero, and it looks like zero here, but because the chart is red, we know that even at the, at the lowest month, we still have cash in hand. Now, investors won't be looking at your spreadsheets, at least not in detail, until late in the fundraising process, but they will be looking at your four or five year forecasts. Probably is gonna be a summary of your FS annual sheet that's gonna be on your pitch deck. Now, the focus of that conversation of what the investors will be looking at is first, that your forecast for the next 18 to 24 months, the period that they're funding is on track. Maybe there's, make sure that there's nothing missing, that, the, that there's enough budget set aside for marketing and for all the other stuff. And second, they're gonna be looking at how exciting the long-term potential is of the business. Are you projecting realistic yet ambitious growth over the next five to seven years? Now, investors, I think, wanna see a balance between ambition and realism. If you claim that the business is becoming a trillion dollar company by year three, obviously something's off. Now, I generally like to follow this 80-20 rule where I spend about 80% of my time budgeting the immediate future, the next 18 to 24 months, to the next fundable milestone, what your current round of funding is gonna cover. And then about 20% of my time with the longer term future, making sure that, again, your assumptions about it are realistic and that your team is scaling appropriately and your expenses. Now, the future is, of course, much more harder to predict. Everybody understands that what you're adding here are estimates, but they do need to show that, first, there are enough customers in the world to meet all these goals. You're not going over the total possible amount of customers that exist, that'd be your town. You need to prove that the company can scale quickly and that you're gonna be, continue to be aggressive in your growth. But the focus should be in the immediate future with the longer term version, just for context and ambition. Now in our knowledge base, you're gonna find details on how to bring everything else into the model, the rest of your team, other expenses, equipment, other costs. But the key here is that the framework is always going to remain the same don't run out of money. Now, this video tutorial is part of our financial modeling bootcamp. This is a full multi-hour bootcamp that we've set up to teach you how to develop a financial model, how to forecast revenue the right way. It's part of the Slidebean platform, along with the financial model tool that I've been using through the video. Link below or this QR code. Hope this is useful. Thanks for watching, guys.